Hi, welcome to this, my second video in the series on the continuous uniform distribution or continuous rectangular distribution as some people call it. And I've got an example here which is going to involve working out the probability density function for the distribution, also working out some probabilities and interquartile range we've got here as well. So we'll just run through this question first of all. A coffee machine dispenses coffee into cups and it's controlled electronically to randomly cut off the flow of coffee between 180 millilitres to 190 millilitres. And what we've got to do is find the probability that machine dispenses, and in the first question, less than 188 millilitres, in the second part, exactly 188 millilitres. Part three, between 182 millilitres and 186 millilitres. And in part four, work out the interquartile range. And if you want to just pause the video, if you feel uh, that you know how to do this and just want to practice it, just pause the video, come back when ready, and you can look at the work solution and compare your results. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Now the first thing I'd need to do is define the distribution. So I'm going to say that let x be the random variable, the amount dispensed. And x is going to be distributed as a uniform distribution, a continuous uniform distribution with parameters 180 and 190. Now I'd next want to just sketch the graph of the probability density function. And it's going to look something like this. If I was to define it as say f of x would have this axis as f of x. And we'll have our horizontal axis here as x. And we know that it dispenses coffee between 180 millilitres and 190 millilitres. Now it's a continuous uniform distribution so it's going to be a horizontal line something like this because it's equally likely that the machine will dispense any amount of coffee between 180 and 190 millilitres and it's zero otherwise. So my graph would look something like this. We'll just join that down to the 180 and down to 190. Now, we've got to work out this value, this constant value here. Let's call it k. And we can do this very easily because we know that this area in here has got to come to 1. So I know that k multiplied by the width here, which is 10 units, has got to equal 1. So it follows that that constant k must be equal to 1 tenth. So when it comes to defining the probability density function f of x, the PDF if you like, it comes in two parts. For the first part it's equal to this constant value here, k, which we've just seen is 1 tenth. So it's 1 tenth for any value of x between 180 and 190 millilitres. And outside of that region, you can see it's zero, so it would write zero otherwise. So if you were asked to sketch the probability density function, okay, it would be this. And if you're asked to define it, it would be this. Okay, so not that we're asked to do that, but I would suggest that you do purely because it's going to help the understanding of the next part. Now for this next part, okay, part one, or the first part anyway, let's just draw our sketch again. We've got to work out the probability that machine dispenses less than 188 millilitres. So if I was to sketch the probability density function, the graph of it, we've got our 
distribution going between 180 and 190. But we're interested in the probability it dispenses less than 188 millilitres, and that's given by this area here that I've shaded. And so that's going to be fairly straightforward. Let's just put an intro, the probability that X, the amount dispensed, is less than 188 millilitres. It's going to equal that area, which is going to be one tenth for that height there, times this distance here. Well, that's clearly going to be eight units, the difference between 188 and 180. So it's one tenth of eight, one tenth times eight, which is going to equal 0 0.8. So that's our probability then that the machine dispenses less than 188 millilitres. Now in part two, we've got to work out the probability that the machine dispenses exactly 188 millilitres. Now, you cannot dispense 188 millilitres exactly because we're dealing with a continuous random variable here. So that probability is going to be equal to zero. Now in part three, we've got to work out the probability it dispenses between 182 and 186 millilitres. So if we just put part three up here. Again, I'm going to return to a sketch for that one. So we're looking at this area shaded here between 182 and 186 millilitres. So we just put an intro here, and that is that the probability that the machine dispenses between 182 millilitres and 186 millilitres. And that's that area, as I say, so it's going to be the height of the rectangle, one-tenth, times the width. So it's going to be one-tenth multiplied by the width, which is the difference between 186 and 182, which is four units. One-tenth of four is 0.4. Okay, so that's three done. And we come on to the last question now. Let's just bring a line down here. On this last question, part four, we've got to work out the interquartile range. So again, if we look at a sketch for this, then for the interquartile range, that's the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile, Q3 and Q1. Now to get Q1, we know that because it's a horizontal line here, then we've just got to go a quarter the way across this width here. The width is 10 units, so we just need to go a quarter the way of 10 units and add that distance onto 180. So Q1, we'll just put Q1, equals 180 plus a quarter of that width, a quarter of 10 in other words. And what have we got? Well, it comes to 182.5. As for Q3, Q3 is just going to be 190, but we've just got to reduce that by a quarter of that width, a quarter of 10. And if you work that one out, you get 187.5. So we've got the lower quartile, we've got the upper quartile. So therefore we can see that the interquartile range, IQR for short, is going to equal the difference between the upper quartile, 187.5, minus the lower quartile, 182.5, and if you subtract those two, you get five. If you're asked to find the median, not that we are, but the median would have been right in the middle here, and it would have been 185. Okay, well there are the questions answered for you. So I hope that's given you some idea and that you can use this example to help you do similar ones. Now in my next video in this series, what we'll look at is how we calculate the mean, E of X in other words, and the variance of this particular distribution. And we'll do some problems on that. 
And the best place to see this series is to go on my website and look in the index for the continuous uniform distribution or the rectangular distribution and uh, you'll find links to the other videos as well in this series. Okay.